Hello guys, today I'm going to do a quick analysis of the Transition TR500. Okay, so this bike is um, the type of suspension is a swing arm 4 bar, meaning that you have here the, the swing arm, okay, where is the wheel and the brakes, rotating around the main pivot, which is here, and then you have a rocker arm here, and a connecting link linking the swing arm to the rocker arm. Okay, so let's see the characteristics of the bike. So if you watched my previous video about the anti-squat, you already know that in this type of bikes, the swing arm for bar bikes, they also behave as a single pivot bike. And in this case, the main pivot is just on top of the, the 36T uh, uh, chain ring. Okay, so since the, the main pivot is on top of the, the chain ring, it means that it has a great uh, anti-squat uh, characteristics. Okay, so good pedaling characteristics. Also, given the main position of the main pivot, the anti-squat will be very similar between each, each one of, of the gears uh, at the cassette. So here you have the graphs for the anti-squat, and as you can see, you have 100% of anti-squat independently of the rear cog, which is great. Okay, now let's see the, the anti rise or the brake squat, which basically are due to the rotation of the brake calipter around the disc when the suspension compresses. Okay, so check the rotation of the calipter around the disc when the suspension compresses. Okay, as you can see, the caliper rotates around the disc. Okay, and if you saw my previous video, you already know that in single pivot bikes or in swing arm 4, by, four bar bikes, the anti-rise values are around 90 to 100%. And without surprise, you have here an anti-rise about 97%, the green line, okay, crossing, crossing the, the contact point at the, at the wheel and crossing also the main pivot, okay, green line. Good, so the axle pads is a traditional arc, okay, nothing special with it. You have here the, the, mag the amplification of the axle pads. So the pedal kickback uh, is not very low because the bike also has a good anti-squat, but it's also not very high, so it's under uh, normal conditions on the, on the average. So what about the progressivity? So the progressivity is how the, the shock rate changes during travel and it's a quite progressive bike, okay? About 55% of progressivity. So it's slightly higher than the average for a downhill bike. You can see here the, the leverage ratio curve. So that's it, a quick analysis of the transition. Overall, the bike has a great pedaling uh, efficiency. The braking is not great because it's a single pivot bike, but I mean, it's not very problematic. And the progressivity is quite high, about 55% of progressivity, which is a very good value for a downhill bike. So if you have one, enjoy it and have fun with it. Bye.